Ah, hello, and welcome to another episode of The Hat Historian. In this video, I will be talking about a hat that has become synonymous with education and academic achievement. The mortarboard. The mortarboard, also sometimes known as a graduation cap, square student cap, or academic cap, is a strange-looking hat comprised of a tight skull cap surmounted by a flat square board topped with a tassel. It is worn throughout the Anglophone world by students and non-doctoral faculty when in full academic dress, usually for graduation ceremonies in high schools and universities, and has become something of a symbol of the academic field and a cultural icon. Once worn daily in academic settings, it gets its common name of mortarboard from its resemblance to a mason's board on which mortar is kept when laying bricks. So let's see why students wear these fairly distinctive hats. As with many traditional hats, the far origins fade into the fog of history, but it is generally assumed that the mortarboard's ancestors reside in medieval European clerical dress. In those days, education was almost entirely run by the church, and faculty and students, who were often members of the clergy, would wear clerical dress, including long cassocks and small skull caps. These caps originally looked nothing like what would eventually become the mortarboard, but were in fact a form of pileus, which I talked about in my video on the fez, a small, rounded, brimless hat of Greco-Roman origin. Incidentally, other parts of academic garb, including robes, hoods, and other accoutrements, are clerical in origin too, having their origins in the robes and cloaks monks wore in medieval monasteries. The hoods being there because, well, it got cold. This style of dress progressively spread as more and more universities were founded throughout Europe in the late Middle Ages and early Renaissance. The shape of this pileus evolved over time, with styles changing to become flatter on top and become somewhat larger. A form of this hat is still worn by Greek Orthodox priests, or in full dress by some judicial courts. By the 14th and 15th centuries, it had started to take a square shape, being made of four pieces of cloth with seams sewn in on the four sides, which was said to represent the four cardinal points, though this is probably a post facto explanation. The more probable one is that it was easier to manufacture. This pileus quadratus soon spread throughout the church, and would eventually evolve into the biretta, a square hat still worn today by some Catholic clergy, notably cardinals. But this also coincided with momentous events within the church, namely the Protestant Reformation. As England split with Rome, so too did its universities, and the style of dress there began to evolve independently. However, it still remained relatively parallel to the rest of Christendom, but this meant that styles would change in different manners. This was true of the biretta, worn by the clergy and academic faculty. While the Roman one generally became stiffer and remained small, the English one started to become larger, squarer, with a flatter top. An example of what that would have looked like can still be seen in the Canterbury cap, still worn by some Anglican clergy, or even in select cases in universities. This academic dress was at the time worn every day by faculty and students, and therefore started becoming associated with the university system in England. This spread even further with England's colonial adventures in America, and the founding of some of the early universities there, such as Harvard or Yale. These institutions generally followed English academic traditions, and with that, the form of dress that included the academic cap. As some graduates of these colleges went on to found new schools, they brought these practices with them, and even schools that had little connection imitated the style for its prestige. As education progressively separated from the church, so did the style of academic dress begin to evolve independently. By the 19th century, the academic hat had taken on the stiff, flat shape that we now know, and it is around that time that it began to be referred to as a mortarboard, in reference to the item that I mentioned earlier. In those days, academic robes were expected to be worn every day in higher institutions, and the conventions of the time forbade the wearing of hats indoors by men. Thus, it was generally carried under the arm in most circumstances, and the flat shape made this easier. In the United States, the wearing of academic dress for everyday events declined sharply after the Civil War, with it being relegated to graduation ceremonies and formal events, while it continued in Europe and other Commonwealth countries until around World War I. It is after that that the hat began to be strongly associated with graduations. The breadth of the British Empire had also helped spread many British practices throughout the world, and thus the mortarboard is worn in many countries that were formerly part of it. By the 1950s, it had also spread to high school graduations in the United States. While it was originally almost universally black, in these schools, which were less attached to tradition, many colors of cap and gown appeared, a practice that continues to this day. 
Some authorities say this was to better show up on photographs, while others think that it was for schools to better differentiate themselves. While thanks to British imperialism and American cultural popularity, the mortarboard is the most common and recognized student hat in the world, it is not the only one. Some other countries have their own traditions, with hats of very different shapes. This is notable in the Germanic countries, where student associations have what they call couleur, flat hats of different colors representing their associations. Likewise, the Nordic countries have a kepi-like cap, slightly different for each nation, with examples for Denmark, Sweden, Norway, or Iceland. Finland has a top hat for doctoral students, as I mentioned in another video, and Estonia has a highly embroidered skull cap. France, which does not quite have the graduation ceremony tradition of other countries, developed a soft beret-like hat, which I am wearing, called the feluche, which is generally decorated with ribbons and pins indicating one's school, the town it is in, the field of study, and other accomplishments. It is said that it was adopted in the late 19th century, when French students at a conference, hatless, felt drab next to the Italian, Spanish, and Germanic students in their regalia. Spanish traditions include a sort of skullcap reminiscent of the early clerical hats I mentioned above, as do some Belgian Catholic schools. Indonesians, meanwhile, wear a hat that strongly resembles the mortarboard, though it is pentagonal rather than square. Higher academic degrees and faculty have their own headwear, which in English-speaking countries is generally a tam or a tutor cap, sometimes decorated with feathers. As I said, in Finland they have a top hat, Spain has a beretta, France has a round toque, and many, many others. The mortarboard, being a ceremonial uniform hat, has not been subject to any considerations of popularity for a long time, and is still almost universally worn at graduation ceremonies in English-speaking countries. Now fairly simple, with an elastic band around the base to be one size fits all, in the US it has a tassel whose color indicates the field in which the graduate is receiving their diploma. As you can see, mine is white, which indicates the arts and sciences, as I was a history major. Over the years, several traditions and practices have evolved around it that are still commonly followed. In some cases, students will personalize their hats by adorning them with messages or decorations, with a Yale forestry school in particular turning this into an art form. Upon conferring of degrees, students will generally move their tassel from the right side to the left, and then, most famously, throw them into the air in celebration. According to legend, this tradition started in 1912 at the US Naval Academy, when the newly graduated officers, receiving their new hats reflective of their rank, threw their old ones away in celebration. This exuberant display soon spread to other institutions, though without a new one to replace it, graduates have to go try and retrieve their hats afterwards if they want to keep it. I'll confess that I didn't throw mine very high as I wanted to be sure I didn't lose it. The mortarboard is a very recognizable symbol now, seen on many party favors around the end of the academic year, given as gifts or put up as decorations at graduation parties. It is also used in logos of educational services, and is the name of a national honor society. So while an odd-looking hat, short of great changes in academic tradition, the mortarboard is still going to be with us for a long time. So I hope once again that you found this video interesting, and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.